And we spoke about all of this uh, with Peter Knights. He's the CEO of Wild Aid. And I started by asking him why ivory prices have fallen in recent months. It's a very steep drop, and I think there's a number of different factors here. Um, the announcement recently by the Chinese government they'd be ending legal sales of ivory will obviously have a huge impact, and that's been a really probably the greatest single measure any government could take to help elephants. But then we've had a massive campaign uh, working with Chinese media led by Yao Ming, which has explained to people that these elephants are being poached for this ivory uh, and all the terrible things that are happening to supply ivory. So it's been a combination of public education and government action. And you've done some polling on uh, changing Chinese attitudes specifically towards this. Tell me what the numbers are now. Well, in the course of the campaign since 2011, there's been a 50 percent increase in awareness that elephant ivory was coming from poached elephants, not just from elephants that have died of natural causes. And 95 percent of the Chinese public supported an ivory ban, uh, a ban on sales of ivory. So there's been a big shift, uh, largely just due to awareness um, in support of ivory, uh, sorry, of conservation and against the ivory trade. And I think that's reflected in the drop in prices. And what's happening, though, in Hong Kong? Because uh, there still is a legal trade there. And in many ways, it's a back door for Chinese tourists to continue to buy ivory. Well, Hong Kong was always the epicenter of the ivory trade, right back in the 1980s when ivory trade was legal. Um, most of it was going via Hong Kong, and indeed they had 670 tons of ivory stockpiled when the ivory trade was banned in 1989. And so what we've also been seeing is that uh, mainland tourists have been going down to Hong Kong uh, and buying the ivory and then smuggling it back to the mainland. So uh, even though Hong Kong had this legal trade, 95 percent of the ivory was going back to China illegally. And we pointed that out to the Hong Kong authorities. And and they're now saying they're going to consider a ban, too. And any update on how soon that could happen? Uh, well, they're still working on it. So uh, not soon enough for the elephants, but it, it is in process. And uh, they are trying to ask questions like, you know, what do we have to compensate anybody? Um, these kind of questions have to be worked out to so how they would do it legally. But it seems like it's in motion. You mentioned, of course, the efforts that China and the U.S. have both made together. Of course, in September, they announced uh, further work on banning ivory sales. Um, talk to me a little bit about the significance of that. Well, you know, the United States um, is still a big ivory market. There's still ivory circulating here. So for the two most powerful nations of the world to do this, I think, is very significant. I think we'll see other people like Hong Kong, possibly Thailand, maybe even Japan following suit. So again, this is, hopefully is a, is a real uh, turn of the tide for the elephants. And it's our goal, our hope, our aspiration that this year, 2016, both those nations will ban ivory sales. And this can be the first year for a long time that elephant births can outweigh elephant deaths due to post Part of the problem here, too, is that if, if there is any legal ivory trade, often these sellers can replace legal ivory with illegal ivory and just keep on selling it. So how do you advise countries to look at banning this product? I mean, you've got Hong Kong and China both looking at this very closely and committing to it. Um, what are the actual uh, pieces of advice you have for them on how to actually implement it? Well, what we've seen, the history of the ivory trade has been a legal trade providing a paper, a paper trail authorization for all kinds of tons and tons of poached ivory to flow through the system. So you've just got to, sh you've got to stop that system altogether. So, you know, there may be some exceptions for things that can be proven to be over 50-year antiques, which are clearly not from, from new elephants. But beyond that, uh, a sales ban should be as strict and clear as possible with a clear message to the public, because we've seen every system that tries to regulate this be completely abused. And so it's time now to say, you know what, enough of this ivory trade needs to be consigned to history and we need to move on and, and help conserve the elephants. So in your view, there just has to be a complete ban to stop all illegal activity. There can't be any halfway. Well, the, we've tried halfway. Um, you know, this was supposed to be a one-off sale in 2009 that was right. supposed to be strictly regulated. And what happened was it, it caused a new spike in the ivory poaching. Uh, and we just saw tons and tons of ivory flow through that system. People have the paperwork. They use it multiple times for multiple pieces. You know, we've tried that. We've tried tinkering. We've tried it twice now. In both cases, it's been a disaster for the elephants. It's time to move on and just, as I say, make the ivory trade part of history uh, and not part of our future. You know, periodically we do see these movements to actually legalize the ivory trade as a means of stopping uh, the poaching. I'm sure you're not in favor of that, but where is that movement overall now? Is that also on the decline? 
Well, I think so now, because like I said, we, we tried it between 1975, 1989. We tried this strictly regulated trade. Elephant numbers halved during that time period. We tried it again in 2009. Uh, poachings went from very low levels up to 33,000 a year. You know, we've tried, we've tried tinkering. We've tried to, to regulate it. It's now time to just admit defeat that this is, the demand is too great. You can't suppress or control it. We need to move forward. The clear message to the public, don't buy ivory. A clear, um, a clear approach for customs and police. It's illegal if you're selling it uh, and move on.